Hello everyone. Welcome to Grade 12 AP Chemistry Review of the Basics. Today I am going to talk about the periodic table. So here is a picture of what a periodic table looks like. If you don't know um, how to look at a periodic table right now, um, it is a very, very chaotic looking table uh, that really it's hard to tell what is the relationship between uh, the elements and how is it being organized this way. We are going through this step by step in this course. So by the end of this, you should have a beginners to intermediate feel of how a periodic table should be used and understand what each section is about. So, let me explain you the general periodic table layout. Generally, the table is organized such that the known chemical elements are sorted in terms of the properties of their atomic structure. Elements are presented in the periodic table by increasing values of their atomic numbers, starting from the top left. Then it would move to the right hand side before you move to the next row. So from top to bottom, starting from left to right on each row. There are 18 columns in the periodic table, with the top part having 7 rows. And lastly, the lower two rows of the periodic table, if you remember from the picture before, the two rows in the bottom which is not attached to the majority of the elements in the periodic table, are the elements that cannot fit in terms of properties. These are the elements of atomic number 58 to 71 and from 90 to 103. So now let's look at um, the most important um, of the section that you require in um, high school chemistry. And these are the representative elements. These are located at the top part of the periodic table and we would uh, ignore the middle section as you can see in uh, the little screen cap that I have in the bottom of this screen. So the highlighted sections, um, the darker color highlighted sections, are the ones that we call the representative elements. So how was these representative elements organized? Well, the most left column uh, of the highlighted elements have the fewest valence electrons. Relationship among the representative elements in their given column is their tendency to act as a metal, non-metal, or metalloid. Metals are located at the left columns, the left two columns that are highlighted and the non-metals are the right columns the rest of the columns on the right hand side in which it doesn't build, in it doesn't start with the h or the be of the columns on the left so now let's look at the leftmost column of the periodic table, which is called the 
alkaline metal, or group 1A. So it consists of hydrogen, H, lithium, Li, sodium, Na, potassium, K, rubidium, Rb, cesium, Cs, and francium, Fr. These are soft metals, has only one valence electrons in its outermost shell, and it's soluble in water. It usually is reactive with water, forming hydroxides, and with oxygen, forming oxides. And usually the alkali metals are more reactive as it goes down the group, meaning that francium, for example, would be more reactive than hydrogen because francium is lower in the group than hydrogen. Now, on the right hand side of the alkaline metals lies the alkaline earth metal group or group 2A. It consists of the following elements beryllium, Be, magnesium, Mg, calcium, Ca, strontium, Sr, barium, Ba, and radium, Ra. These elements have two valence electrons in its outermost shell. It is a harder metal than group 1 and it also is not as reactive as its group 1 counterparts. Now I'm not going to go through every single element in the periodic table because I believe that it would um, very much bore you and it is very not needed uh, for what you need to study for your chemistry class. Um, so let's move to the very very right hand side of the periodic table because this is quite possibly the third most important or probably the second most important group in the periodic table. And this is the noble gas group, which is group 8A. So it consists of the elements helium, He, neon, Ne, argon, Ar, krypton, Kr, xenon, Xe, and radon, Rn. These are very, very stable um, elements uh, with a valence of zero, meaning they don't have any extra um, electrons in its uh, shell. It, it means a full shell. And um, again, reactivity follows from top to bottom. Um, but generally, noble gas are very stable. There are exceptions, however, in terms of the reactivity, um, and that is uh, that neon is actually less reactive than helium. So, now let's talk about the transition metals. The transition metals is what you see in um, this little snapshot that I provided on this screen. The highlighted, the darker sections are what we call the transition metals, which is the middle portion and the bottom portion of the periodic table. These are usually ductile and malleable, conducts electricity and heat. 
Um, their valence electrons um, are usually present in more than one shell, hence why they're called the transition metals. Um, some of these, such as iron, cobalt, and nickel, also produces magnetic fields. Now, lastly, let's just briefly talk about the bottom two rules of the periodic table. Um, you really, I believe that um, in your curriculum, you really rarely touch upon the last two rules. Um, however, it's not uh, it's not a bad idea um, to just briefly go through this. So. The bottom two rows, um, the top row is called the lanthanide, and the bottom row is called the actinide. The lanthanides are also known as the rare earth metals, and all of the actinides, um, the bottom row, are considered radioactive. Thank you for uh, visiting our lecture on chemistry review the basics if you are interested in um, or you have not done so already uh, please download our free grade 12 chemistry review of the basics app which is available for both iPhone and Android if you would like to support us in uh, creating more helpful videos for you uh, in studying for your course, please like our videos, um, subscribe to our channels, and uh, be sure to share this with your friends so you and your friends can both succeed in your chemistry class. Thank you. See you next time.